A couple of videos back I made a grow light from some regular LEDs. The end goal is to grow lavender in the darkness of my bedroom and have it also water itself. So the next step will be to make the watering system. In this experiment I will be using an old jug of windshield wiper fluid and it will also allow me to try out my newly purchased a tiny microcontrollers. As usual you can find a github link to all the resources for this project in the description. Since I'm uh, testing this as we go, I decided to get myself one of these uh, connector adapter things where you can put your a tiny mi microcontroller into. Some other things we'll need. A debug LED. I'm gonna go with green. Obviously go with any color. And then we need a transistor. An NPN transistor should be able to handle uh, the current that the motor draws and this is uh, this is the motor it's a small submersible pump I find these work quite well I'm not sure how long these are actually going to hold up in the water we'll uh, have to see that's why I'm building this prototype before I make anything proper and then we're going to need a couple of capacitors first off I have this uh, 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor which needs to sit uh, between uh, voltage input and ground on the microcontroller then an electrolytic capacitor at uh, 10 microfarads which also sits between uh, voltage input and uh, ground on the microcontroller the reason I'm using two is because um, the motor generates interference and uh, that's what the small capacitor is for but the motor when it turns on it also draws a lot of current and the power supply might not be able to uh, keep up with that. I'm not sure if I have to do uh, both of these uh, solutions for that because I also have uh, this 100 microfarad capacitor that sits between uh, voltage and ground on the battery itself but it seemed to work a lot more reliable when I did it this way so I had uh, 10 microfarads directly on the uh, microcontroller and uh, 100 for the battery. For the motor we're also going to need a shotgun diode, a flyback diode and then I have a couple of resistors. Since I went with a green uh, LED which has a higher voltage drop than a red LED I'm gonna go with a slightly uh, lower value on my resistor with uh, 100 ohms instead of 120 that I've written on my schematic. Oh whoops, that LED should have gone up there. Then I have a 2.2 kilo ohm base resistor for the transistor and I also have a 10k pull up resistor for the button which is here and this is uh, one of those um, you click it and it stays down and then you click it again and it goes up again and that will be used for a debug. Then I'm also going to need one of these soil moisture sensors just a cheap Chinese ones that you can get these in bulk and to connect that I'm going to be using one of these three pin connectors need a plug and a receptacle to uh, connect the actual motor I use one of these I'm not sure if it's JST it's a little bit larger than the ones I usually use and for the battery I'm going to be using one as well so I can have it uh, hooked up to just a wall wart if I wanted to do that and uh, I'm going to need a little bit more hardware I'm going to need a box for this but uh, I'm gonna design the box after I put things together so I know how big it is but what I do know that I'll need is a can Let's see if I can get this in here this is an old windshield wiper fluid uh, can that I've uh, cleaned out fairly thoroughly I wouldn't drink for it from it, but uh, it should be uh, good enough for uh, a plant. It's about uh, five liters, I think. And for that, I need a, a little bit of uh, tubing, a hose. And uh, for the top, I've designed this uh, connector where I can get uh, the wire from the motor out and uh, a bigger one for the uh, tubing itself. And it doesn't fit perfectly on, but uh, it's good enough because it does need to let a little bit of air through otherwise the pump wouldn't be able to actually get anything out and finally I'm going to put all of this together on uh, one of these uh, small prototype boards let's get uh, wiring my usual camera stand 
that's broken. So I'm gonna see if I can just do it with a normal tripod. Here I'm connecting the breakout type adapter thing for the uh, a tiny. Next I'll connect the uh, NPN transistor. I'll put the power in here on the side with a uh, ground out to the side and uh, voltage on the inside and that means I'll put uh, capacitor but I'll put that through from the other way around leave a little bit of space so I can bend it down if I need and chop the legs off like you're a mafia bus I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever can't remember exactly how the scene went in uh, Scarface now we do need uh, capacitors across, let's see if it goes like this, then the capacitors should go across like, like, like that between those two pins. The problem is we're also going to need to uh, connect power the uh, power pins to them. On the top right we have uh, voltage input and on the bottom left we have ground and they need to be connected up to the battery. So the first thing to put in the uh, electrolytic capacitor, the one at uh, 10 microfarads. But we also need to put in the uh, ceramic capacitor. For that one it doesn't matter what orientation you put it. So just make sure it goes between uh, ground and voltage. But we're also going to need to connect that up to the battery. So I'm going to stick some wires in there. Next week I need to get started on this year's Easter game, so that's going to be fun. I think I'll make it with an ESP32 this year, so I can uh, just make a little box and uh, plug it in, so I don't have to do any rigging every year. I trimmed the wires a little bit longer because these um, through holes are connected 3x3. Three and I will probably need more than uh, three connections for uh, ground and the voltage. This to the right up here in the corner is the collector, so that's where we're going to be uh, having the negative pin of the motor on. But we're also going to need to uh, connect that to the battery. And we also need a diode with a cathode on uh, voltage. This is a flyback diode. I'm not 100% sure on the science behind it, so I'm not going to speak about that. You can look that up if you want to. But essentially, if you don't have one, when you turn off the motor, I believe it generates a voltage spike, which can destroy your transistor. And that's why we need a flyback diode. And uh, you have to make sure that you have a diode that can actually handle the uh, current of the motor. I'm using a Schottky diode for this. This one is quite big. Though I have uh, larger ones. <laughs> but then it wouldn't fit on the board. And this is also where we will be connecting the motor. And we'll be doing that through one of these uh, regular plugs. Before designing a case all I have to do is uh, connect a few uh, resistors now. And the only resistor I can connect right now without connecting anything to the case would be the base resistor going to the transistor. And that goes on physical pin 3, which is down here. And the base of the transistor. And on this transistor the base is in the middle. I'll let it hang out a little bit and then isolate it later because it's starting to get a little bit crowded on this board now. It's a good thing there's not a lot of components left to connect. The final piece before designing a case will be to attach the power connector which is going to go out to the battery. I think I'm going to mark this with a B. Just so I remember. I 
Oh, there's one more connector I can do. The motor output needs to go to ground. And when I say the motor output, I mean the the emitter of the transistor. The emitter sits on the right side and it goes directly to ground. So I have power to the motor here. Power to the battery or from the battery comes here. And I have the capacitors from on the battery of the flyback diode and uh, capacitors for the microcontroller. Now I believe I'm missing four connectors to the microcontroller but I think that for all of those I need to actually design the case. One of those is the debug LED which needs to go into the case and the button needs one and the soil moisture sensor needs two. So let's design a case that can actually fit this entire thing. It'll be a little box. Here's actually my second design because I made the first design and hooked everything up and then I realized I never actually put a slot for the button on it. So I now have uh, printed four different parts. First off I made this new cap for the jug. We have one for the cables and one for the holes. Then uh, the lid, or rather. And I printed this little thing which will be uh, sitting on the button and then the case itself. And on the back side I added uh, some holes that I can put zip ties through so I can attach it to the lid of the uh, jug. And on the inside I have a battery connector on the bottom. And then I have the, uh, a bit for the button. And in the front I have a hole for the LED, connector for the pump and a connector for the sensor. This time, before I do anything else, because I may need to actually reprint this if I mess this step up, I'm going to attach the button. To do that, I can just push that one in. And then the button is going to sit like this. Something like right on the edge. The only problem in this is that I need to get the glue just right. I'm gonna hold it down and let it set for a bit in hopefully a position that will allow the button to slide freely. I think it's set well enough so let's attach the battery connector. That one's gonna set really quickly. And I think I will put in the 3-pin JST connector. I'm going to use some tongs for this one. And then I think I'll put in the the other JST connector, the one to the motor. While this sets, I'm going to prepare the LED. And the LED needs a 100 ohm resistor. Well, you could probably go lower since the voltage drop is higher on the green ones. But it doesn't matter that much, it just needs to be an indicator. Used for debugging and also to tell you while, while it's actually pumping. I always put my resistors on the cathode whenever possible. 
because that makes it easier for me to remember if I put all of them on the cathode. I'll do the same thing here. Just put a small amount of glue on the inside of the ring. And use a stump of wire and just mash it around to make sure it gets evenly distributed. And enough. And now that can sit and wait for the glue to dry. The device has now been sitting overnight and the button still works fine. So I think it's time to solder on the uh, rest of the connectors on the board and actually give this a try then. First off I will connect the JST connector if I put the uh, soil moisture sensor like this across, we have um, voltage, ground, and data out. So that's what I'm gonna do here as well. Voltage, ground, and data out. Then I'll put a little bit of solder on the wires to make it easier to connect. Just making sure these are isolated. And I need to figure out which two of these pins are active while the button is pressed down versus while it's pushed up. So I'm going to push the button in. This is uh, when it's going to be enter debug mode. So, so I need to figure out which pins right now are connected. These two are connected. Which means when it's pushed up, I'm assuming it's the forward one, two, no. Okay, there we go. When it's pushed up, it's these two, and when it's pushed down, it's these two. So I need to connect this one and this one. And the polarity doesn't matter because it just needs to um, close the circuit. And here's the 10 kilo ohm resistor that I'm going to be using. This one's a pull up resistor, so it needs to go to voltage. Physical pin 2, which is this one, it needs to be connected to something like that because uh, the voltage input is uh, right next to it. I also need to connect it over to the actual button and through the button back to ground. So I'm gonna use a piece of wire. And the resistor can just come straight down and connect with the voltage input to the uh, microcontroller. We need a small piece of wire going to the LED. And that would be physical pin 2 or uh, GPIO 3. It's a little trickier to sort these on right now. I suppose if I make another one, I'm probably going to put the uh, capacitors on last because they're just so bulky. I actually should probably have gone with a black one for this since uh, the cathode will be going in here. But I don't want to re-solder, so I'll just be lazy and add a little black marking on it. So I can tell that it's uh, with the ground wire. I'm also going to need another ground wire. That goes over to the button. I realize in hindsight also that I could probably have just connected that one and uh, ground it to the sensor together. That would have saved me some wiring. So I'll have to keep that in mind for the next time. I guess the, those are the problems that you discover, you discover while you're winging it. Okay, what else do I have to wire? Let's take a look. We have uh, the top left, which should not be connected. 
as the reset but uh, these things have an internal reset now if you wanna be extra sure you can use um, something like a 10k resistor do make sure it doesn't reset randomly but it's been working for me pretty well so I'm just gonna rely on the internal one and um, we have uh, the cathode from the LED comes in here and when you're using the Digistump um, bootloader, the micronucleus bootloader for these, you need to have this one pulled up when you're starting it. And that's what I'm doing with the LED. So uh, it actually goes through the LED, then in here, and that pulls it up. And then we have physical pin 3, which goes out to uh, and toggles the motor. Physical pin 4 is ground, that's connected to ground. Physical pin 5 we have not connected yet. It goes to the data out, so this one is the one that reads the uh, sensor. And then we have physical pin uh, 6, which uh, turns the sensor on. Because the thing is with, these, uh, with this type of uh, moisture sensor, if you pass uh, current through it a lot, these uh, lanes, or especially one of these lanes, is going to rust very quickly. So what you want to do is keep it on for as short time as possible, like uh, one millisecond maybe, even lower if you can do that, to prevent it from rusting too quickly. So th that's why the uh, power output to the actual sensor goes on this pin. Then we have physical pin 7 which goes out to the button, and that's the one that we've uh, just connected the uh, yellow wire to. And finally we have voltage in. So what we have left to connect now is this one, which is uh, the data output from the sensor. We have the sensor on, button, on wire. And then the sensor data wire. Which is a little bit long. I believe that's uh, everything, all the wires connected to the microcontroller. Just realized I might have put it upside down. Yep, I put the socket upside down. I mean, it doesn't matter, but it's just, it's just I need to make sure that I put the microcontroller in the right way. I'll just uh, mark the top left corner with a little bit of green. And then I can always draw an arrow across it. Hopefully then I'll remember that that's the way it goes. And now there's only one more wire that I need to actually connect to the uh, board itself. And uh, that's uh, one connected to the voltage, which is going to go and power the LED. And this means that I should now be able to screw the circuit board in. I got a bunch of these little nice laptop screws when I ordered the heat sinks and they're perfect for these small projects. Now there are four wires left to connect. This one goes to voltage, this one goes to ground. There. Now I just gotta plug it in and see if it catches on fire or not. Hopefully I wired everything right. I went and tested it and it half worked. Turns out there might... this solder connector down here is probably not soldered properly so I'm going to add some more and hope I don't destroy anything in the process. It seems to work so far but I need to make a wire to connect the sensor to. And I have uh, this piece of wire which comes with uh, three inside of it. It's kind of expensive, I have no idea why it's uh, so expensive to get wires with three inside them. But nevertheless, let's use this one.
probably worth mentioning that this thing has uh, four pins. VCC, which is voltage obviously, and ground is ground. Um, but then it also has DO and AO. AO is for analog output, but I'm not going to be using that this time. DO is for digital output, and digital output allows us to use this. Uh, this is technically, I think this is a potentiometer. You uh, screw on it, and then uh, you, you change the resistance, which is um, essentially the, the moisture level that you want to have it trigger on. And then that will either turn it on or off. So it will only send a digital one or zero signal, essentially. As usual, I want to uh, isolate this a bit, but also because these tiny wires are fragile. And this will help a little bit with that. I mean, I can be extra fancy and put a bit of heat shrink on. And then what I'm going to do is probably just solder this one uh, directly on. There's no need to have a wire between these. So now this part you just stick it down in the uh, soil and then you screw on this piece here until the light turns on and that's when it's going to start watering. But I'm going to show how that works later. I'm also going to need to connect this now to uh, the uh, plug. At least if you need uh, four pin wire, you can just get some uh, cheap phone wire. That will work fine. Now that I've plugged it in, I can tell where I put the connectors. And I know I put ground in the middle. The first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of tin to the wires themselves. I gotta get a better camera mount. Right now I'm using a separate tripod that sits on the ground. And it is kind of getting in the way. You can see that I put the voltage on the right pin. Before I solder anything on, I'm going to grab some heat shrink. Just a small bit should be enough, since I'm going to be using some tape also to isolate these. I'll put some more on over, t over the top of this thing. But first, see if I can get the heat shrink. I wonder if you can get these type of wires pre-made. That would save me a lot of time since I have a lot of projects that use these three. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it works. At least I think it works. I'll have to try it. Yep, it works pretty fine. Now for the next part, we're going to need some big jugs. Or at least one. And also the cap, and a motor, and another male JST connector. And basically this one is going to have to go straight in. Which means that the JST connector needs to go around, and that means I'm going to need a little bit of extension wire between these two. Not a whole lot though. Something like that should do. For this first one, I'm going to be connecting the positive to the positive. And you do need to be mindful of uh, plugging in positive to positive and negative to negative on the pump. Because otherwise it's going to be pumping in reverse, and that's not really going to help a lot. Unless you want to make bubbles. Maybe you do want to make bubbles. I mean, this is not going to help you with a plant, but it might look pretty. Before I do anything else here, I will want some heat shrink on this. If you hear a weird noise, I'm not sure how well it's picking up, but if you hear a weird noise in the background, that's my neighbor power washing his car. Because after a week of freezing temperatures in April, I finally have some decent weather. I'm gonna hope that this is nice and sealed to 
prevent any water from entering. It's probably not going to make direct contact with the water. But just in case of splashing it's probably good to uh, make sure it's nice and tight. There are a few things that I'm going to need to do in order to get this thing into the jug. Because it has fins, I'm not really sure what they're for, but um, I need to remove those. But I think I can dislodge those with uh, just a scissor. Yeah, I shouldn't need more than that. I'll put the wire through the wire hole. I'm thinking maybe I should have made the wiring hole a little bit wider. It's also going to fit nice and tight on here now, so... And before I put the motor in, I'm also going to need to uh, put the actual tube on. I could be a little bit longer piece than I think that I'll need. Because it's easier to remove extra tubing than it is to uh, add. I wonder if it will help if you uh, heat it a bit on it. I'm not sure if it's going to shrink like heat shrink. But I think it's on good enough. Which means that I should be able to push this down now. I might have to go around this way. Now these things are in really tight here, which would be a problem, since if you're pumping liquid out, you're also going to need to uh, put air into the jug, otherwise the pump isn't going to be able to squish the, uh, <laughs> the jug. But the uh, treads I made on uh, this uh, cap here, they, they don't seal perfectly, so it will be able to pull in air at the same time as it uh, puts out the water. And now it looks like this. Which means that this uh, wire needs to go across here, connect to the JST plug, which is going to be connected to the device and power the motor. There, now, now we have the motor rigged up. Which means it's time to actually see if this thing works. Here's my test setup. When I plug in the batteries, hopefully it will read dry because this one is not uh, connected. The sensor. And then start pumping for a few seconds. But there is a problem with doing this. The hose can't go below the water level or it's going to drain the entire thing. There's our pumping. There we go. Just for show I'm going to plug it in with the hose below the water line so you can see what's actually going to happen when I do this. The pump has stopped, but it's still flowing. And it's going to keep flowing until the water is, until the exit is above the water line in the jug. So you need to keep it above the water line. So just keep that in mind. In order to keep the pipe still, I printed this little thing that you can stick down in the soil and uh, then put the pipe through it. So let's fill this up with uh, soil and then actually plant something. There we go, I filled it with a bit of soil. And now I think I'm going to plant a little bit of parsley. And now I'm going to add a little bit of water. Let it sit for a few minutes and then use this as uh, the baseline.
for the uh, moisture level. Okay, that should be good enough. I've uh, also fully charged some batteries. These are the GP Recycle uh, rechargeable batteries at 200 milliamp hours. So I kind of want to see how long they will actually last with the system because the circuit that I made only draws uh, one microamp while it's sleeping which is doing most of the time but the motor itself draws quite a lot of power so it's going to be interesting to see how, how long these last I'll probably make a post on like Twitter or something when uh, when they actually do expire but keep in mind that might be a month from now I have no idea I added this button to configure this thing because if you push down the button and then plug in the power it blinks once then it's going to blink a couple of times and then turn on solid and at that point the sensor is going to glow bright red which indicates that uh, it's now sensing and it's going to do so permanently until we turn off the configuration mode so I'm gonna stick it down into the pot then it turns on saying that it's detecting moisture and I want to keep the moisture level around that level I think So I'll screw on this until it just turns off. So I'll turn off the config mode and unplug it and then plug in the motor. I filled up the tank so let's give this a try. That had quite a healthy dose of water. That, I'm going to configure it a little bit lower. Now I turn it on. It flashes very briefly. And that's the actual reading. But now it doesn't pump anything because it's um, wet enough. So I'm going to leave it at this value and then just check in on it every few days and see what, what's actually happening with it. And now all that's left to do is wait and see. If this works well for a couple of weeks, then I can finally get started on the lavender one. My plans for that are a little more involved since I needed to turn off the lights and not run the pump while I'm sleeping. But the next project will be this year's Easter game. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you in that one.